Founded in 1848, the Royal Melbourne Hospital is Victoria's oldest public hospital. From its original location on Melbourne's Lonsdale Street, the medical facility was moved to Parkville in 1944, where it began its journey as Victoria's first teaching hospital to become one of the state's leading public teaching and research hospitals. Starting in the 1900s, the Royal Melbourne Hospital has been conducting important and groundbreaking medical research. Today, these leading medical researchers are honoured by their induction into the inaugural Royal Melbourne Hospital's Research Hall of Fame. Dr Edward Embley. Dr Embley was a significant chloroform researcher, showing that sudden death under chloroform was due to cardiac, not respiratory failure. He won the first David Syme Prize for scientific research in 1906. Dr Lucy Bryce. In 1929, together with the Australian Red Cross, Dr Bryce established Victoria's first blood transfusion service based at the Royal Melbourne Hospital. As honorary director, she undertook the blood grouping as well as other aspects of laboratory testing and medical care of donors. Her leadership was instrumental in further developing blood research and transfusion services. Sir Frank McFarlane Burnett. Sir Frank McFarlane Burnett won the 1960 Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine for his work on immunological tolerance. Dr. Graham Robertson. Well, Graham Robertson was one of the absolute pioneers and founders of clinical neurology in Australia. He was famous for his clinical observations and in particular, he was the world authority on a leading methodology for investigating uh, and imaging the brain called pneumoencephalography. It's a technique that relied on introduction of air through the lumbar spinal fluid and moving it up into the brain to determine really for the first time exquisite images of the brain uh, that could allow diagnosis of pathologies such as brain tumour. Graham's work predated the era of CT and MRI scanning which is now commonplace. He published the definitive textbook and really changed the whole way that brain diseases were imaged, investigated and treated. Graham was an artist. His expertise in photography and his cast iron work was actually instrumental in his work in pneumoencephalography. Graham really uh, epitomised the concept of academic medicine and academic neurology, bringing together of clinical excellence and academic advance research and improvements in patient outcomes. So Benjamin Rank. Benjamin Rank was uh, appointed as in the honorary position of consultant plastic surgeon to the Royal Melbourne Hospital. The main area he was involved with were in head and neck surgery, in hand surgery and in skin cancer. I guess the, the, the major contribution he really made, for example in hand surgery, was to research, look at what was happening with hand injuries and how he could improve it. And he wrote a book about it too, I might add. It deals with primary repair versus secondary repair, how you treat different types of hand injury. And it's monumental, it's something that's almost the Bible for young plastic surgeons as they graduate. Plastic surgery is there for everyone to see. And one of his philosophies was that if it looks good, it probably is good. And that comes to that chair. Because to improve his handicraft, to get to show you the best results possible, he did an embroidery class. I think that the main thing that, that came out of Benny is not to accept anything but the best with whatever you did in surgery. He didn't stand for anything that was second best and the ward rounds and everything were conducted the same way. You had to match up to excellence. Dr John Cade. John Cade's research is best known for his discovery of the use of lithium in manic illness and subsequently therefore in bipolar disorders. He took lithium salts himself to make sure that they were safe. Lithium was able to clear out whole wards of patients with mania with huge human and financial and hospital benefits. The philosophy that a simple salt could cure a psychiatric disorder totally changed the paradigm of psychiatric illness from being just all in the mind to being 
biochemical. This research was so important because it ushered in the first of the big areas of psychopharmacology. My father saw clinical research as not an end in its own right. He saw the most important aspect of patient care as good clinical care, which had three pillars to it. Firstly was excellence of the patient care itself. Secondly was teaching. And the third was research to continually improve the science underpinning the management. Emeritus Professor Richard Lovell. The first Professor of Medicine at the Royal Melbourne Hospital in 1955, Richard Lovell is a man with many research interests. He was involved in the discovery of malignant hypothermia and research leading to the early and successful introduction of kidney transplants into routine medical practice in Australia.